Good morning, Victory Church. We are so grateful that you're here joining us Sunday morning, whether that's in person, hopefully in person if you're local, or online, maybe you're out of town. Whatever it is, we are grateful to have you guys here with us. Go ahead and stand up as we get ready to worship the Lord and enter into his presence. And as you know, we're in this series called At The Movies. So maybe you got some popcorn, some sodas on your way in, a different form of caffeine than coffee. I know, but it's all delicious. And maybe this is your first time coming to church. We want to welcome you. Go ahead and text Victory Denver to 94000. That's a great way to get connected. Let us know how we can support you, whether that's through prayer, small groups, discipleship, whatever it is, we want to be here for you. Let's go ahead and get ready for worship. Who's excited to be here? And the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. God, we are so grateful to have this time to worship you, to enter into your presence. Lord, whatever it is that you have for everybody here, just speak to those hearts. Let everyone that walks through those doors open their laptop, turn on their TV, whatever it is, just to be focused on you, to put everything else to the side, anything that they're going through in life right now, that this is a time for you to worship you, to give thanks and glorify your name. We love you, Lord. Thank you for everything you're going to do throughout this next hour and throughout this week to come in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship. Well, good morning, Victory. How are we doing this morning? Anybody ready to worship? Hey, whether you're here in the room or online, we're so happy that you're here. Come on. Let's sing this out. What is Mary you can raise again? What is lifeless you breathe life within? What seems over you, it's not the end. There's nothing that you cannot do. Ready, gotta see you move. All right, let's sing it out. There's resurrection power right here is break it out let dead things come to life let dry bones come alive no one who empties grave is here to do the same let dead things come to life let dry bones come alive come alive come alive let dead things come to life testimony this morning come on we're gonna sing this out together believing in faith really what we're singing out come on get ready I'm running out of the grave I'm running out of the grave sickness get out of my way cause there's healing there's healing come on I'm running out of the grave hey. 
We believe in the God of miracles, amen. Oh man, we believe that God to do something this morning. No matter what, what, what you got going on in your life, no matter what type of mountains you're facing, know that God's got your back. We believe that this morning. We're gonna sing that out, we're gonna testify. Come on. Why would I worry when giants come calling my name? God is so much bigger than the troubles I face. Come on. Why would I hunger for power, riches, or fame? My God is so much better than all of these things. Now we sing. I won't be shaken, I won't be moved, my God is faithful, sing his property, oh yes they are, so I speak to the mountain, oh it's time to move. My God is bigger, better, greater, greater than you. We believe that this morning, come on. My enemies scatter, cause they know the battle's big. Yeah. Oh my God, he's already won. He died for my ransom. He died for my ransom. And rose up on the third day. Oh, yeah, yeah. My God is greater in hell and the grave. I won't be shaken.
There's no problem to be. There's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God that's impossible. There's no mountain too high. Oh God, no There's no fear that I have. He doesn't already know. There's no problem to be. There's no weapon too strong. There is nothing for God that's impossible. Everybody, today's sermon is part of our At the Movies series, where we dive into biblical truths that are found everywhere we look. Now, if you're able to, you don't want to miss our in person services because there we're going to create this whole experience with popcorn and drinks and giveaways and all of that. But not only that, there are some parts of this series that we can only show live at our Westminster campus. If you're here and you weren't able to make it to the service, or maybe you're just watching after this series finished, you won't be able to see some of the movie clips here online, but you'll still be able to grab a hold of all the great takeaways that we draw from them. So get your popcorn, get your Bibles ready, and let's dive in. Hey, we're so glad that you're here, man. Can we just hear real quick for that worship team? My goodness gracious, guys, you guys are awesome. So good. I don't get the chance to be in the audience that much, so that was, sometimes I forget how good these guys are, and then I hear them, and I'm like, man, those guys are good. Awesome. Hey, well, welcome to Victory Church. We're so glad that you're here, whether you're here with us in person or you're watching online. Thank you for being a part of the Victory Church family. Amen. Listen, it doesn't matter if you've been with us a thousand times or this is your very first Sunday, you're in the right place at the right time. See, because here at Victory, we believe that we all exist to encounter God and engage the world. All right, let's try that one more time. We encounter God and there you go. We engage the world. And that's what we're here to do today. We're here to encounter God. See, because we understand that no matter how great the worship set is, no matter how good the sermon may be, that's not what's going to change your life. What's going to change your life is an encounter with God. And when you have that life-changing encounter, then you can go and you can engage the world in an impactful, powerful, positive, encouraging way. Amen? Amen. And see, that's that's one of the reasons I love this sermon series, At the Movies. Somebody say, At the Movies. Man, are y'all liking this series or what? It's been so much fun. It's been so much fun to see the biblical concepts in all these movies. And, and one of the reasons I love this series so much is because so many of us have family or friends or coworkers or classmates or people that we know that we've been praying for, we've been fasting for, we've been inviting them to church, and for one reason or another, they're still not coming. Whether that may be, well, they're not comfortable in church or they're busy on Sundays or whatever the case may be. We said, hey, come with me to church and they're not showing up. Well, now we can say, hey, let's go watch a movie and let me share some gospel with you that way. Now we can say, hey, let's go watch The Greatest Showman and let me tell you how God can take what the world calls worthless and he can turn it into a masterpiece. Hey, let's go watch Up and let me tell you how about how every single generation can have the adventure of a lifetime walking in a relationship with God. Let's go watch Forrest Gump and let me tell you how God can take the area of your greatest struggle and turn it into your greatest strength. We now have the tools to say, hey, let's go watch a movie and let me share the gospel with you. Amen? That is awesome. 
Another reason I love this series at the movies is is because it's such a fresh reminder that no matter how far we may feel from God, he's always right there. I mean, think about it, right? These movies that we've been talking about, they're not quote-unquote Christian movies, right? We're not, we're not talking about the passion of the Christ or, or something easy like that. They're, they're movies that we would consider, well, they're not Christian-based. And I'm sure, you know, when the director was making the movie, he probably wasn't thinking about sharing the gospel. And yet, here we are. See, because we're all creations of the greatest creator, and so his fingerprints are all over us. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we create in one form or another will reflect the great creator. We can't help but to reflect God's glory no matter how hard some people may try to shy away from it. Romans 1.20 says, For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky. And through everything God made, they can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and his divine nature. God's fingerprints, his invisible qualities are all over creation. And I love that this series brings that to the forefront. Who would have thought that Forrest Gump, that up, that inception would be a tool to share the gospel, and yet here we are. Show of hands, who's seen this movie before? Okay, about 50% of us. Spoiler alert for the other 50. (laughs) Should have watched it before today. Uh, Keep your hands up real quick. Keep your hand up if you were confused like crazy by this movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. Well, listen, I'm going to try not to lose you guys today. I'm not going to do a sermon within a sermon within a sermon like they did in the movie. I'm just going to do one. (laughs) However, if I do lose you, if you do get confused, we're just going to remember this. Isaiah 55, for just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so his ways are higher than your ways, and so his thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So if we get lost, we'll say, well, Lord, it's because I just, your ways are greater. Your ways are higher. All right, Inception, let's get into it. Inception is one of Christopher Nolan's, honestly, greatest movies, right? He's been around for some time, and he's made some awesome movies. Uh, and for, the, for some reason or another, it seems all of his movies kind of play with the concept of time and the concept of reality, and, and they confuse everybody that watches them, right? Tenant and Interstellar were fantastic, but I still have no idea what happened. <laughs> I've watched YouTube theories, and that just lost me even more. But before all of that was Inception, and Inception is a, is a movie about a group of extractors. These are people that break into other people's dreams and they steal information. This team is led by Dom Cobb, who's played by Leonardo DiCaprio, the, the dreamboat of Leo DiCaprio. And Cobb and his team, they, they start off by they're, they're trying to steal this idea from, from a big energy tycoon, but he figures out that they're in his dreams. And so now this team has to break apart and go into hiding. Unfortunately, they're, they're not good at hiding, and they're caught pretty quickly at the start of the movie by this tycoon that they were just trying to steal from. However, instead of getting mad at them, he says, hey, actually, I've got a job for you. I can clear your name. I can get you out of the hot water that you're in if you would just do one job for me. I don't want you to steal an idea from somebody. I want you to plant an idea in somebody. And so the, tr- the team gets together, and they try to figure out, you know, how are they going to plant this idea in the subject's brain? And, and they, they want to really make it stick, so they go inside a dream, inside a dream, inside a dream, deep into this person's subconscious to make the idea stick. And the whole movie, you're left wondering, wait, was that a dream? Wait, no, 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 was, no, no that's real. No, no, that's a dream. The, the thing's spinning. It's real. No, it's falling. It's a dream. And it's, it's confusing, as all can be. But... All throughout the movie, there's actually very different and very specific spiritual concepts that we could speak of, right? We see, the, we see Cobb's guilt and grief over the death of his wife, and we see how forgiveness is the only way for him to go home. I mean, that'll preach, right? Or we see how, how the pursuit of, of earthly possessions and power will leave you an old man filled with regret. That'll preach, But today, I want to follow a different route. Today, I want to stick with actually the main goal of the movie, the most obvious theme in the movie. Today, I want to talk about the power of an idea. The power of an idea, the power of a thought. All throughout the movie, we're told how powerful an idea can be and how much impact it can have in our everyday lives. We see how one person's idea can spread and infect the group around them And in fact, we've seen this throughout history, right? One person's dream, one person's idea, one person's thought could spread and impact so many people for a myriad of reasons. We've had great examples in history like Martin Luther King Jr. who had the idea that we were all equal and so he started to march and everybody came around that idea. 
We've seen terrible examples of that, right? All throughout history, we've seen atrocities committed and, and human rights violations, and it all began with an idea. All of those things began with just one thought. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so is he. Your thoughts, your ideas, they control your life. They control your life. And we actually spent a whole series talking about this earlier last year. The series is called Mindset. If you weren't with us last year or you want a refresher, that whole series is on our YouTube channel, Victory Denver. Go check it out. I highly, highly recommend it. But in that series, Pastor Matt made one resounding statement that kind of carried us throughout the entire series that said, your life is always moving in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Your life is controlled by your thoughts. You know, we've all heard the saying, you are what you eat. Some of us should take that a little bit more seriously, Pastor Saul. <laughs> I love you, bro. You are what you eat. Well, the Bible here is saying you are what you think. You are what you think. Every single action begins as a thought. Every single decision we've made in life first started as an idea. Everything we do, everything we say, everything we give, everything we take, everything in our lives begins as an idea. Think about this. Everything you have began as an idea. The car you drove here today, right? You thought about, okay, what model do I want? Do I need a sedan? Do I need a truck? Do I need an SUV? What color? Off-road, gas, diesel? It all started with just one thought. Before you started your career, you said, okay, what field do I want to go into? What are the pay raise look is like? What, a, what school do I need to go to? It all started with one thought. Before, before you bought your house, you thought, what neighborhood do I want to live in? Do I want ranch style or open concept or, or you know, two stories, one story? What do I want? It all started with a thought. Before you married your spouse, you thought, okay, what qualities do I want in this person? You know, blonde, brunette, blue eyes, brown eyes, green eyes, tall, short, loving, charismatic, funny. What characteristics do I want in this person? It all started with the thought. And some of you are looking at me like you're saying, man, I wish I'd spend more time thinking about that one. <laughs> Ladies, don't nudge your husbands. They're perfect the way God made them, all right? <laughs> We're perfect in all our flaws. Before you came to church today, right, it started with the thought. You're like, well, am I going to be early? Am I going to be late? Am I going to lift my hands and worship? Am I going to put my hands down? Right after church, you're going to start thinking, are we going to go eat, you know, at Bad Daddy's or, or you know, in and out or a breakfast place after church? Not right now. I know some of you guys are already thinking about that right now. <laughs> Pay attention. Before you do anything, you think about it. And on the flip side, if you don't think about it, you don't do it. Your thoughts, your ideas, they control your life from the smallest decision like what to wear to, to the biggest decision like who to marry. All of it is controlled by your ideas. And to take this one step further, your destiny is shaped by your thoughts and ideas. Who you're going to be in five years is based on your thoughts. Where you'll be in your marriage in five years, it's based on your thoughts. How you're going to raise your kids, it's based on your ideas. The legacy you leave behind when you're gone, it is all based on your thoughts. That's why the Word instructs us to watch our thoughts, to be careful about what we think about. Proverbs 4.23 says, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your life is shaped by your thoughts and your destiny is impacted and shaped by your ideas. And I know some of you think I'm reaching, right? You're like, how in the world is my destiny, my lifelong legacy going to be impacted by one single idea? Here's how it starts. Your thoughts become your actions. What you do, what you don't do. Your actions become your habits. What's second nature? What, do, what's, what's, what comes to you as easy as breathing? Your habits create your character. What kind of person are you? And your character decides your destiny. Your, action, your thoughts create your actions. Your actions create your habits. Your habits create your character. And your character decides your destiny. All of our lives revolve around our thoughts and our ideas. We are all where we are today because of the ideas we had yesterday, a year ago, five years ago, ten years ago. When I was 18 years old and I had graduated high school, I had the great idea that the Army was a better choice than college. And that single idea impacted my entire life. If I hadn't had that idea and if I had gone the other route, I would have never been stationed in Fort Bliss, Texas for training. 
which means I would have never visited Odessa, Texas to visit some family, which means I would have never met my friend Angel to, who invited me to hang out at a youth night, which means I would have never met my wife, which means I would have never moved back to Colorado, which means I would have stayed in the army instead of getting out to spend time with my life and start our journey in ministry, which means I would have never been invited to Victory Church to sing on a Sunday morning for the Spanish service, which means I would have never met Pastor Matt, which means I would have never had the chance to pastor if I hadn't had the one idea 13 years ago, I wouldn't be right here, right now. My life, your life, is controlled by your ideas and your thoughts. And on top of controlling our lives, our ideas have the power to create our life. Our perception of reality, the way we look at the world around us, it is all decided and created by our thoughts and our ideas. Right? If we think the world is against us, then everything somebody says, everything somebody does, everything somebody tells us, we receive it as a personal attack. They might have meant it you know, as, as input, to, hey, I want to make you get better, and you say, no, that's, you're attacking me, because we think the world is against us. Or if we think somebody doesn't like us, everything they say, everything they do, we look at it as a put down, as an insult. Right? We've all done it. We've all made these fake scenarios in our mind where we're like, I should have said this, or how did she say that, or why did she say it that way, or why did he think it that way, or why did he look at me that way, and now we're mad at somebody for something they never did. Husbands, where are you guys at? You, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? How many times have you woken up and your wife is just, how dare you? How dare I wake up? No, how dare you not buy me Mount Rushmore in my dream? And... I don't know. You were dreaming. I don't know. We've gotten in so much trouble because of something we never did. See, that's why the Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4, he says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. He's saying, don't fix your thoughts on what's negative, on what's broken, on what's wrong. Instead, let your thoughts be on what is true, on what is pure, on what is just. See, because Paul understood that your life is controlled by your thoughts. Paul knew that your destiny is shaped by your ideas. But Paul's not the only one that knows that. Satan knows that your destiny is shaped by your ideas. Satan knows that your life is controlled by your thoughts, and so he wants to plant destructive thoughts and ideas in your mind. See, the enemy knows that your life is controlled by your thoughts, and so he wants to plant ideas that lead you away from God. He wants to plant thoughts and ideas that lead you to your death. Satan knows that if he can plant just one idea in your mind, if he can plant just a small seed of doubt in your mind, he can derail your entire destiny. He knows that all he has to do is get one sinful idea to take root in your mind, and he can destroy you. See, because sin, like everything else in our lives, begins with just one thought. Pride begins with one thought. Lust begins with one thought. Anger, envy, worry, resentment, it all starts with just one thought. Jesus spoke about this in Mark chapter 7. He said, for from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All of these evil things come from within and they defile a person. All those sins start in our minds. They all start with our thoughts and with our ideas. And that's why Satan wants to plant a sinful thought in your mind so that you will be led to your death. Romans 8 says, those who are dominated by sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. Satan wants your thoughts to be focused on the things of this world. He wants your ideas to be dominated by sinful nature so that your life is dominated by sinful nature. He wants everything around you to be consumed by your sinful nature thoughts so that then you will be led to your death. But there's good news. Who's ready for some good news? Amen. Satan cannot control your thoughts. He can plant an idea, he can plant a thought, but the only one that can control your thoughts is you. 
You have the power. You have the authority to control your mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. You have the power to take control of your thoughts and take control of your life and have a sound mind. Don't give in to fear. Walk in the power and love and sound mind that God has given you. Amen? All right, so today I want to share three ways that you can do just that. Three ways to control your thoughts. Somebody say, I want to control my thoughts. Number one, to control your thoughts, you need to feed your thoughts. If you want to take control of your thoughts, you first need to feed your thoughts. Some of you know that, you know, over the last few months I've been starting to work out. I've been trying to, to put on some muscle mass, you know, now that, now that I've got a daughter and my wife is having another baby. We're like, all right, I got to get buff. I got to get buffer when the boyfriend shows up, and I've, I've got a ways to go, so I'm starting early. I'm like, all right, by the time she's 15, 16, I should be just jacked. <laughs> and so I started training like four, you know, I've been training consistently now for about four to six months, and, and I'm not seeing the change that I want to see, right? And so I'm starting to get frustrated, and I'm like, what is going on? So I called a buddy of mine, I called one of my cousins who's, you know, he's super fit, he's super knowledgeable about, about like fitness and all that stuff. And I said, hey man, can you come over, can you, you know, walk me through a workout, you know, show me if I'm doing something wrong, maybe I'm not, I'm not lifting the right amount of weight or I'm not doing enough reps. I was like, just come over and walk me through this. So, so he came over to the house and we ran through the workout and he said, you know what, it's overall, it's good. You know, you know maybe don't arch your back so much, keep your elbows in, but other than that, you're fine, you're lifting the right weight, your routine is fine, you're, you're doing good. And I said, well then how come I still look like this? <laughs> and he said, well, what's, what's your diet look like? <laughs> uh, yeah, hello is right. Apparently, burgers and pizza and burritos and menudos are not food to lean up and build muscle. Who knew? <laughs> Apparently, junk food is not the way to a healthy body. But, but just like your body can't function on junk food alone, your mind can't function and thrive on junk food alone. See, we live in a world where our minds, our thoughts are inundated with garbage, with junk food, right? Social media, Instagram, TikTok, the news, you know, CNN, Fox, whatever your poison is, TV shows, movies, music, all of it is feeding our thoughts negativity and ruin. It's all junk food. And then we wonder why we can't seem to get a control of our thoughts, we need to feed our thoughts something better than the junk food of the world. We need to feed our thoughts with the truth of God's word. Matthew 4 says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. The word of God should be the biggest source of substance for your mind. The word of God should be the biggest meal you feed your thoughts Just like David said in Psalms 119, he says, I rise before the dawn and I cry for help. I hope, I put my hope in your words. My eyes are awake before the watches of night that I may meditate on your promise. David's saying, I wake up early and I pray and I spend time in your word and I meditate on your promises. David was feeding his thoughts with God's truth every single day. And if somebody was surrounded by negativity, you know it was David. David was surrounded by negativity, but still he's saying, I find my hope in your words. I meditate in your promise every single day. See, because God's truth, God's word will always shine through the darkest thought. There's no thought that you can have that will not submit to God's truth. See, when your thoughts say you'll never change, God's truth says anyone who is joined to Christ is a new being. The old is gone. The new has come. When our thoughts say you're weak and you'll always be weak, God's truth says the one true God gives me strength and he removes the obstacles in my way. When our thoughts say you're all alone and no one cares about you, God's truth says he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. God's truth will always, always, always overcome your thoughts. Feed your thoughts with the truth, with God's word, and you'll be able to control them whenever they start to slip away. Number two, you need to fight your thoughts. You need to feed your thoughts with truth and God's word, and you need to fight any destructive thoughts that may come. See, some of us have let destructive thoughts control us for years. We've let what others have said about us become our reality. Maybe your, call, your parents called you useless as a kid, and now you think, well, I can't do anything above average because, well, I'm, I'm useless. That's what, that's what my identity is. 
Or perhaps people made fun of you because, you know, you were overweight or you're underweight or you're too tall or you're too short or or whatever the reason may be. And now you struggle with your self-image because that's become your reality. You've let other people plant destructive ideas in your mind and now you're living out the consequences. You've become a prisoner to a false narrative that says you're useless, you're weak, you're unloved, you're purposeless. You view yourself through the lens of that thought and now you have a hard time accepting anything other than negative thoughts. Too many of us have allowed those destructive thoughts to live in our minds rent-free, and we're suffering because of it. We've been held captive by intrusive, destructive thoughts. We allowed thoughts that don't belong in our minds to stay there instead of pushing them out. And look, I know destructive thoughts will come, right? We're surrounded by it. We're surrounded by negativity, so I know that they're going to start to creep in, and it's hard to push against the barrage of negativity. But just because you can't stop the birds from flying over your head doesn't mean you have to let them build a nest in your hair. Just because the thought passes through your mind doesn't mean you have to let it live there. you got to realize this, that not everything you think is true. Don't let them take settle. If negative thoughts creep in, don't let them settle. Kick them out. See, just like the projections of Cobb's mind attacked Ariadne, For being in his mind when she didn't belong, so too you and I can attack attack the thoughts that don't belong in our mind and we can cast them out. 2 Corinthians 10.5 says, we pull down every proud obstacle that is raised against the knowledge of God. We take every thought captive and we make it obey Christ. Take those thoughts that say you're not good enough. Take those thoughts that say God doesn't love you. Take those thoughts that say God can't use you and bring them all before Christ. Whenever one of those starts to to come into your mind, don't let it settle. Say, no, I'm, I'm bringing this before the word of God. Say, Lord, I have no idea where this thought's coming from, but it doesn't align with your word. It doesn't align with your truth. And so I'm fighting back against it, and I'm bringing it before you. I may not be able to, I may not be strong enough to defeat it, but I know that you are. Remember, you don't have to believe everything you think. Just because you thought it doesn't mean it has to stay there. Just because you thought it doesn't mean it has to become truth. You can take it captive and bring it before Christ. Fight against destructive thoughts and set your mind free. And lastly, number three, you need to focus your thoughts. You need to feed your thoughts with the truth. You need to fight against destructive thoughts. And number three, you need to focus your thoughts we read it earlier, Philippians 4, 8 says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Focus on these things. When negative thoughts try to sneak their way back into your mind, don't focus on them. Don't give them the attention that they want. Focus instead on God's truth. Focus on on God's word. And listen, I know that's hard. It's, it's easier said than done, right? It's happened to all of us. We try to think about God's word and then something creeps in. We get down, we sit down to pray and then something comes up. It happened to me this morning. I was getting ready. To, I was studying my message. I was getting my words ready. And then my mind goes, hey, you have a cup of coffee already, but you should go make a pour over instead. It's going to take you 25 minutes, but you should go do that instead. I'm like, no, no, hold on, focus. Hey, you should check out Instagram. Maybe something, somebody posted something cool. You should look at the news. Maybe something happened that you need to be aware about. You should do this. You should do that. You should do everything except focus on God's word. When I'm trying to ponder, my thoughts begin to wonder, to wander. When I'm trying to pray, my thoughts start to go astray. And that's happened to all of us. We're trying, okay, Lord, I'm here. Amen. Amen. I don't remember anything. I, 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 okay, God, thank you. Or we start to pray and then the laundry list of items we were supposed to do, the honey-do list that we haven't looked at in months, we sit down to pray and then it just comes right back. Oh, I was supposed to mow the lawn. I was supposed to paint that room. I was supposed to do this. I was supposed to do that. Focus your thoughts. Remember, you don't have to think about what you're thinking about. Just because a thought passes through, you don't have to focus on it. Instead, focus your thoughts and focus your ideas on God. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. You will keep in perfect peace all whose thoughts are fixed on you, all whose thoughts are focused on you. You want to fill your life with peace? Focus on God. You want to fill your mind with peace? Focus on God. Focus on his love. Focus on his grace. Focus on his mercy. Focus on his purpose for your life. Focus your thoughts 
on God, when turmoil and doubt and anxiety and fear, when all those thoughts try to tear you down, you can find peace if you will just focus your thoughts on God. Amen? Amen. Your thoughts and your ideas control your life. When we understand the importance of a thought, when we understand the power of an idea, we can begin to change the way that we think. We begin to take any destructive thoughts that come creeping into our minds, we begin to take them captive, and we begin to find peace of mind. Romans 12 says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. God wants to change your life by changing your thoughts. He wants to transform your life by transforming your ideas. He wants to transform and shape your destiny by transforming and shaping your mind. But the only way God can do that, the only way he can change your thoughts, change your idea, change your life if he is, is if, if he's a part of your life. If God isn't a part of your life, if you've let your destructive thoughts push him away, if you've let your mind wander onto other things, if you've let your ideas focus on the world, if you've let the world, the thoughts of the world control you, then today is the day to change all of that. Right there where you are, you can say, Jesus, my mind is yours. My thoughts are yours. My idea, my ideas are yours. My life is yours. If that's you, if you're in this room right now, everybody close your eyes. If you're in this room right now, if you're watching online and you say, I've let the thoughts of the world creep into my mind. I've let the ideas of the world take root in my mind and now I'm far from God. Or you're saying, I've never invited God into my life at all. And so I've never been able to, to have him plant ideas in my mind instead. If you say, today I want to change that, today I want to commit my life to Christ or I want to recommit my life to Christ, I want you to raise your hand. Nobody's looking. If you're online, go ahead and throw up a hand emoji right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want us to pray this together. Pray this with me. Remember, it's not my prayer that saves you, but it's your faith in the prayer. Say, Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I surrender my thoughts, my ideas, my mind to you. You're the only one I want to rely on. You're the only one I want to count on. And I want to be totally committed to you. I invite you into my life. I invite you into my mind. I invite you into my heart. Come and be my Savior. Come and be Lord of my thoughts, of my ideas, of my life. Come and transform me by transforming the way I think. Come and change my life by changing my thoughts. Amen. Come on, can we hear it for all those people today? Amen, amen. You can stand to your feet. Listen, I know this is for, this is for all of us. There's not a person in this room, there's not a person that's watching online who doesn't struggle with this. We all struggle with intrusive thoughts. We all struggle with destructive thoughts. We all struggle with focusing our mind on God. Our flesh wants to go one way and our spirit wants to go another way. And we all struggle with that. Romans 7.22 says, I love God's law with all my heart. But there is another power within me that is at war with my mind. And this power makes me a slave to the sin that is still within me. Today I want to invite anybody who feels like that to come forward right now. This should be all of us. We all struggle with this. We all struggle with these thoughts corrupting our mind. We all struggle with these ideas just being in there when they don't belong. I want to invite you up so that we can pray together. I want to pray for you, but I want to pray with you because this applies to me as well. Time and time again, I've let destructive thoughts into my mind. And today I want to say, God, I'm surrendering it to you. My flesh may be weak, but my spirit is willing and I'm going to submit to your law because I love your law. Right there where you are, go ahead and raise your hands with me. I'm going to say, Lord, I love you and I want to obey you. 
And even when my flesh fights against me, my mind, when my mind and my thoughts fight against me, I still want you in my life and I want you to invite you into my life. I want you to be part of my thoughts. I want us to pray together and say, God, help us feed our thoughts with your word, with your truth. Help us fight against destructive thoughts. Help us take all of these thoughts captive and so we can bring them to your presence. And Lord, give us strength to focus our thoughts on you. Not focus on the world, not focus on the distractions, but focus our thoughts and our minds on you because we believe you are the firm foundation. You are the solid rock. And when we're focused on you, nothing can move us because nothing can move you. In Jesus' name we pray and all together we say amen. amen. Come on, we're going to go into a time of worship. We're going to declare that Christ is our firm foundation. If throughout this you feel like you want to come up again prayed for, come up and get prayed for. But let's just all spend some time in the word of God and in God's praise and worship. And let's focus our mind and our thoughts on him. Amen? Amen. amen. say he is our firm foundation we believe and we trust in God Christ is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken I've never been more glad that I've He's never let me down He's faithful through generations So why, so why would He fail now? He won't, oh He won't fail us He won't, oh no, no, no I've still got joy in chaos I've got peace, i got peace that makes no sense so I won't be going under oh not held by my own strength cause I built my life on Jesus he's never let me down he's faithful in every season so I so I Come on, sing it out. He won't, he won't, he won't, he won't. I believe it. He won't fail. He won't fail. Oh, shout it out. He won't, he won't. Come on. Oh, he won't. Oh, he won't fail. He won't fail. Save with you I'm gonna make 
came, oh come on let's sing it out rain came when blue and our house oh this is my testimony oh yeah I'm saved that you can count on no matter what you're going through, no matter what season, in the highs and in the lows, especially in those lows when it's hard to trust anyone. You can trust our Father because Christ is your firm foundation and we can stand on Him. If you made the decision to follow Christ today, we are so excited for you. We want to help you with next steps. And maybe you've already made that decision to follow Christ, but you haven't taken the next step of water baptism. That's an opportunity where we as a church get to celebrate and watch you take that public. Take your faith public and say, I have decided to put Christ as my firm foundation, and I want to show it to the world and live with him as my number one. Our water baptism service is one of the most powerful services that you can be a part of or celebrate as people that you know are getting water baptized. That is coming up on September 11th, so in less than one month, and we want you guys to sign up for that if you have not been water baptized. You have two weeks to do that. The deadline to do that is August 28th. You can register by texting Victory Denver to 94,000, and you can just learn more. So text that number. There's a spot on the website that you can learn all about it, or talk to some people at guest services. We would love to answer any questions that you may have. Now, at that same number, you can also be part of giving. That is an opportunity that we can worship the Lord through our finances and say, you're my firm foundation. I trust you with everything in my life, including my finances. Maybe that's something that you've been fighting. You have a lot of thoughts in your mind that are saying, you're poor. You're never going to make it. You aren't going to be able to do that. This is a time to fight those thoughts and feed them that you will make it. That by pouring into your church, by pouring into thousands and hundreds of thousands of people all throughout the world that we can reach as a church body. You're saying, I put my faith in Jesus. I believe what we're doing here at Victory is powerful, and I'm going to give. Whether that's starting with a dollar or making it to 10% as a tithe, you have to start somewhere and saying, I believe what you said in your word is true, and I'm going to take that step, and I believe. So we would love for you 
to partner with us and take that opportunity. And it is an opportunity to give and be part of what God is doing and what he is doing in and through victory. So buckets are going to be passed in a moment. You can give online or you can give it in the back of the auditorium on your way out. And I just want to say thank you to those who have been faithfully giving, to those who have already taken that step, and to those that are being challenged in these moments to do just that. We're praying for you. We love you. Let's continue to worship.